Reviewing the Assessment and Evaluation Considerations in K-12 Schools As you have become well aware in this course, many standard-setting organizations have established student and teacher evaluations. You have been designing lessons that take their content focus from the New York State Core Curriculum and conceptually are supported by the framework for K-12 science. The Common Core is requiring strong reading and writing components to ensure a science literate populace. The New York State High Stakes Test will be an ongoing evaluation of your students, your classroom, and your school. And before you're certified, you will demonstrate your proficiency in teaching and assessment under the EdTPA licensure examination. The importance of preparing you well for these teaching challenges is emphasized in the large-scale teacher education meetings that are taking place across the state. Throughout this course, you've been developing lessons that would engage students in real aspects of science, allowing them to become immersed in scientific data gathering and analysis and discussion. In your own classroom, you're going to have many forms of assessment from short quizzes to larger unit tests to regions and high stake tests that you'll have at the end of a course. And of course you will always have those ongoing formative informal assessments that you'll be gathering as you work with students in the learning environment. In this module, however, the focus will be on the more complex embedded assessments that you'll be using in your final portfolio. You will begin by designing an assessment that will align with one of your inquiry-based labs. For instance, outlining expectations for a rich lab report or a scaffolded worksheet that prompts for higher levels of thinking, as in the Bloom's taxonomy, or a poster or presentation that could articulate the findings. Then to guide your students so they will understand your expectations and the way you will grade their work, you will create very explicit evaluation criteria. These criteria should both align with the assignment and with the learning objectives that you created for the lesson. You will develop a rubric that will show how the performance on each different evaluation criteria will be associated with the scale value. You would give this rubric and evaluation criteria to your students to help guide their work. Although in this course you will most likely be evaluating hypothetical students, you will use your evaluation criteria and scale that are embedded within your rubric to assess the project that would be submitted by the student. You will then place your actual or theoretical student data into a spreadsheet studying students' performance in the different criteria, determining possible areas of student weakness, and considering ways to improve performance in the future. Although we won't do this here, for the EdTPA you would actually evaluate different subgroups within your class and articulate specific remedies. Well-planned data-driven assessment will be a cornerstone of your good teaching. The importance of education requires that there be ongoing assessment and evaluation.